Hi, my name is Andrew Fisher from Professional Sterling Client Lendering and this is your May property update. Well, the rain has come and the hills are going green, as it seems was much of the country on voting day. And on that note, of course, the election has come and gone and we have a new Prime Minister. So let's hope the market settles a little now that everyone knows who we have as a leader for the next few years. From a housing perspective, this government has one major housing initiative and that is a shared ownership type arrangement that will allow low to mid income earners to buy a 40% share in a private home sale. Interestingly, we already have this type of program in WA and it's called Opening Doors. I've sold a number of those over the years for government and found them to be quite complex in their lending and income criteria, so I'm not convinced this will provide any quick upkick in the market at all. Hopefully though, it helps out some new first homeowners, but we will wait and see. Of course, a large planned jump in the base wage of more than 5% is great news for a large chunk of the community and could see a return to confidence for many buyers, but let's also hope it doesn't cause a surge in interest rates as inflation bites. A report from Rewa this month reports that we are about 20,000 houses short of new housing supply based on population growth and historical building numbers over the next four years. Based on those forecasts, we need a huge jump in new housing numbers to meet supply, and that appears unlikely to happen. So one would assume that will impact the market in a positive way for sellers. Our belief is that short supply is one of the major reasons our market will not feel the impact rate rises as much as other states. So a housing shortage will certainly solidify that position. Another interesting article this month talked about the latest ComSec Home Trends report and the trend since COVID-19 to build bigger homes and have more space. ComSec said government imposed lockdowns in response to COVID-19 have prompted more Aussies to reassess their housing needs as they look to spend more time at home for leisure and work. I believe this is putting a stamp on something we already knew in the hills, that people are coming here for more space and that is putting pressure on our hills market. For interest, the average home size now is 235.8 square metres. So if you have a home as big as that or bigger, you certainly have a property that is right in the buying zone. After Easter, Perth has returned to a more predictable pattern again, with plenty of buyers turning to home opens, many houses still selling quickly and for high prices when compared to historical data. Perth officially ticked up 1.1% last month. So we are still definitely in growth mode, albeit a bit less dramatic. That's our property update in the hills for this month. I trust that gave you some good insights and I'd love for you to comment with any of your own thoughts. We'll see you again in June.